Put it all out in the open, no we don't have to control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment, it's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show what I did with Banksy today in our Liberty session and just do a little bit of a tutorial on how I would go about introducing scary things. So first things first, I turned him loose and then I walked towards the tarp with him and then I started off just encouraging him to investigate just by being present and then rewarding any attempts to investigate the tarp because it was something new in the arena and he went over to it pretty much right away because he knew that it was different and he's quite a curious horse. So with him it took less work than what it might with a more nervous horse but with that said you just still reward any attempt to approach or investigate even if it's from further away and then you shape that gradually towards having them go and actually physically touch it and check it out like what he's doing here And then any positive attempts to investigate, I mark with my cue, which is kind of like a clicker, but I just do it with my mouth because I don't have to carry a clicker. And then I reward him right after. And as he gets more comfortable, I gradually increase my level of expectation before he gets rewarded so that he's not just getting rewarded for minor attempts as he gets better and more confident with what he's doing. Good boy! Banksy is young. I give him more breaks than what I would an older horse and just let him kind of do whatever he wants in the arena during these breaks. And then if he decides to approach the tarp again during one of his breaks, I just reward it. And again, I'm encouraging the investigation and the approach of the tarp. And this made it so that he often chose to be beside the tarp, even when I was just letting him have a break from actually training and having any mental work. So he approached it a lot and he was very curious and he would start to put his feet on it and investigate. And I would grab gradually shape his investigation response to rewarding him for putting his foot on it so that I can gradually shape that towards him actually physically walking over it. You can see here he's still quite cautious of it especially when the breeze blows it at all and it makes a rattling sound so this is why shaping is important because if I were to ask him to go at full intensity and actually just walk over top of the tarp or run towards him dragging the tarp it would scare him and he would run away which is why it's so important to reward the smaller attempts even if it's not what you're fully looking for as your end goal this is what shaping is and that's why it's so important. We investigated we reward that so then after he's had a chance to investigate, I get my target stick out as an additional cue to kind of encourage him to approach and walk over the tarp. And then this means that I don't have to physically walk over it with him every single time, which encourages him to investigate it on his own and put his feet on it. And again, sometimes I lose his focus. So I just kind of move the target around and wait because he was getting distracted by another horse here. And then you see he gets distracted and goes and looks because the horse just came in. Especially with babies, you have to expect them to get distracted sometimes, and then you just work to recapture their focus. So as you can see here, he's distracted by his friend that just got put in this paddock, and I'm just waiting with the target to wait for him to turn and engage with the target, and then I will reward that engagement. And the reason why I stand close is just because sometimes he does rear up by the fence with his friend, and so does his friend, and I don't want them putting a leg through the fence. So that's why I'm kind of a bit more demanding of him to get his focus back, because I just don't want him playing right near the fence. We're he could hurt himself so i recapture his focus and then i bring him back to the tarp and he walks right over it with no problem and then he comes back and he gets a reward and when i'm rewarding him i'm really careful to encourage him to face away from me so in some of these clips you'll notice me kind of moving my arm just to push his face away and then as soon as he does that i reward him and this is just so that he doesn't get grabby especially as a colt he's naturally mouthy and i don't want him to get bitey at people so i'm really religiously encouraging him to face forward and away from me when I'm giving him treats just to teach him that anytime he tries to like mug people for treats that it's not going to result in a reward. Since he had a few attempts walking over the tarp when it wasn't quite as wide and as much to walk over, I spread the tarp out more now so that it's a little bit more of an ask and he just chooses to approach, which is really great. And then he's sniffing and investigating, which is really good. I want him to do this because then he's not going to be surprised if he stands on it and it rattles from the wind and then I won't get a flight response. So I'm encouraging him to stop here too rather than rushing through because some horses, when they get nervous, they'll try to power through whatever they're doing super quickly and then this can be dangerous 
dangerous because they can end up running into you but he's not at that level of fear and he's not surprised by the sound of it at this point because he's had ample time to investigate so I just halt him anyways because it's important for him to stand there and wait and it's also just a good skill to teach him that he doesn't just always walk right over this without stopping And then I've also already taught him a liberty backing cue, which is essentially just me walking towards him and saying back. So then I ask him to back off the tarp this point too, because some horses are more nervous when whatever they're afraid of or whatever they're getting used to is behind them. But as you can see here, he backed off really calmly and didn't care. So then I reward that again. And then I just stand on the tarp and kind of wait and give him a chance to investigate the tarp, walk over top of it if he wants to. And if he gets distracted, I just try to recapture the focus with the tarp Target, which is why target training is actually a pretty reliable way of kind of helping your horse first of all stay out of your space but also capturing their focus again if they get distracted or if they get nervous of something it gives them a familiar skill to go back to and focus on in times of stress. And then coming up here, we have a bit of a reaction because the dogs come flying down the driveway and he likes to chase dogs and treats them as toys. So this is what he's doing. He actually chased them down the fence line. So after he had a chance to play with the dogs down the fence line, I brought him back to the tarp. And as you can see, he's still pretty calm and doesn't care. The thing about Banksy is that he's not an overly spooky horse, but during training, he can get quite excited. So a lot of what I do in reward is just trying to bring his energy level down and encourage him to not get too excited or playful because when he gets playful, he can sometimes have these big reactions that you don't particularly want to occur close to to you and he's usually pretty respectful of space and doesn't try to climb over top of people but as a just in case I like to try to keep his energy level lower while still allowing him to have fun and have a personality because he likes to toss his head he likes to play sometimes and that's okay because I don't want to sour him but he also needs to learn when the time and place to do it is and to stay out of my space. So what I really liked about Banksy during this session is that for the most part, his attention and focus was entirely on me. There was only a few times where he ran over to his buddy in the paddock to go and try to solicit his attention and play with him. And again, this is a really normal behavior, especially for such a young horse. Banksy is also a super playful horse, and he's always trying to get other horses going in the field and turnout and otherwise. So it's just very much a part of his personality as well. And as you can see here, he occasionally does does get a little bit grabby where he kind of turns towards me and then stops himself and turns away and that's because he never gets fed when he turns into me and tries to grab at the treats instead of facing forward so he naturally started correcting himself which is really great but then as you see here he crosses and then he goes and tries to go see his friend again because he's distracted I like to do a lot of repetitions with crossing over the tarp just to make sure he's super comfortable before I increase my demands. And then also here I put my hand up because he started to turn in towards me and that's my cue for stay in your lane. And then he turns and faces forward and gets his reward. So I like to try to correct it the second he kind of starts to cross over the line of what I don't want him to do. And then this stops him from making the mistake in the first place and teaches himself to self-correct whenever he starts to get too excited or up. Then he turns and faces away in where I'm telling him his stationary place is supposed to be to be rewarded. I also want to clarify that it's totally normal and to be expected that young horses will need reminders and corrections to show them what you want them to do and where you want them to be because they're young. They're like young kids or toddlers where they will get distracted. They'll get a little silly. They might try to do stuff that they know they're not supposed to do, but it's too exciting in the moment so I like to remind him and try to contain that energy before it gets out of hand and becomes too big because I don't want him to make mistakes I want him to always feel like he's right because then he feels like the man and he's super excited and just really wants to participate in training and it's a lot more fun and less stressful for him if he's always right.
also haven't done a video on introducing the target to horses, but it's not dissimilar to what I was doing in the beginning of this video with encouraging his approach to the tarp. You would teach the target in a similar fashion where if they show any interest in the target, you reward it, and then you would gradually shape it towards them touching and then following the target, and that's how they would learn how to go after the target in the manner that he has. It's all a shaping process, and you're just rewarding their attempts to engage in the manner that is closest to what you want, and then gradually gradually shaping that towards your end goal, which is eventually following the target like this. And it's a pretty easy process to teach and it's quite fun. You just need to do it in small little intervals. And it really depends on the horse because some horses who are super playful and engaged with toys will immediately go to the target and want to touch it and engage with it. Whereas others might be less interested until they find out that it's rewarding. So you kind of just have to deal with the horse you have and just remind yourself that all horses have different personalities and different likes and dislikes and they'll have strengths and weaknesses in different areas of training. And that's something that you have to respect and realize when you're handling them. So in these next couple of clips, I'm just trying to see if he will approach the tarp at like a trot or a quicker pace than a walk since he's gotten so comfortable just walking over it. And Banksy, even without the tarp around, when I'm doing trot work at Liberty with him, he finds it quite exciting. So we've been working a lot on keeping the energy level low. And this doesn't mean that he can't play. It just means that if he's going to play, I want him to either leave and go get his sillies out away from me or keep it contained enough that it's safe for him to be next to me so here he's kind of snaking his head and playing a little bit and that's okay because he's keeping it in his lane and not being unsafe but if he were to get really big and bucking and kicking out I turn away and I don't do stuff with him anymore and that's kind of his punishment is taking me the fun food person away from him and teaching him that if his energy level isn't below a certain threshold that he doesn't get to engage in work and if he chooses to leave and go off on his own and play I don't reward that but I also so don't punish it because I would way rather him leave and go have a bucking fit and playing elsewhere than doing it right beside me and he does it here but he's trying to get his friend to engage with him and play with him which is okay again because he's young these next clips here i'm picking up the tarp which makes it rattle a lot more than it does when he's walking over it and i'm just showing him what it looks like when i'm lifting it when it's moving and rattling and making sounds because it's more scary and it's a different context than what i was just working on him with so i need to get him used to this again so i'm rewarding any calm behaviors where he's just standing as i rattle it and not trying to get away not looking too nervous and if he needs to back away that's fine again like he's at liberty so if he's scared he can leave so the next thing i do since he was a little bit nervous as I walk away from him and he's a very curious horse so he so follows and then I reward the follow and horses build a lot of confidence when they get to follow whatever they're afraid of while it retreats and this is why I walk away with him with the tarp because it allows him to follow it and build confidence knowing that the tarp is going away from him and that he doesn't have to worry about it coming after him and I think that's really good with a lot of things that horses are scared of to bring it away from them because it allows them to build the confidence and realize that they're in control because because the thing that they're afraid of retreats. As you can see, he's not terribly nervous, but he does back away a little bit when I bring the tarp closer and touch him with it because he doesn't love the rattling sound. So that's why I'm doing shorter rewards and shorter duration when I'm touching him with it. And I'm not going to chase him down if he backs away from me. So it's really about just gradually building the confidence and not just throwing it on them all at once because I'm going to get to where I want to be eventually if I don't scare him. So I'm gradually just touching him with the tarp, rattling the tarp in my hands, and then rewarding him for investigating the tarp and standing still when I touch it to his shoulder. And then from there, I can gradually shape that behavior to the point where I will eventually have the tarp unraveled on top of him. And I have to do it slowly though, because here, like you can see, he lifts up his head and he's a little bit nervous when I put it on him, but he's not scared enough to leave. Like he knows he can leave and he's still standing there so this is why I'm rewarding it so heavily when I'm touching him with it and it's rattling because awesome, I want awesome to capture that behavior while he's being calm and then from there I can very gradually nice. shape that towards eventually unrolling the tarp but it's quite loud so this is something that I do very slowly and as you can see again he put his head up he's not super comfortable with it I reward again and then just stand there and kind of wait for him to relax keep rewarding him the standard the stillery stands and so on and so forth
Holding the tarp on top of them is actually the easy part. It's the taking it off because it makes a loud noise. And as you can see, he gets nervous here and walks away, but then he comes right back. So that's really good because he's not so unconfident that he feels like he needs to like absolutely get away from the thing. Can you imagine doing this to Milo as a two-year-old? Um, no. <laughs> Probably would have walked over it, just not yeah. at liberty that easily. No. So again, here I'm building duration by touching him lightly with it and then immediately rewarding and pulling it away. And if he backs away, the reason why I retreat is again to instill confidence in him so that he gets to choose to be near it and then I bring it back to him. So by retreating it, I remove whatever the stressor is and then he chooses to approach it, which gives him choice and makes it a less fearful experience. And then I return to what I was doing before and he's being really good. So as you can see, by rewarding him and gradually building the duration, he gets more confident comfortable having it on him for lengthier periods and while he still backs away sometimes you can see he's not trying as hard to get away from it and is much more comfortable standing while it is touching him so that's huge and this is why shaping in small intervals is so important because if you do it all at once you can create a major flight response and once you get that flight response they're going to be way more scared of the thing than they would have been if you'd done it at lower intensities first Um, he might look like he's pretty much totally okay with this, but the slight raise in his head when I put it on him and then the backing away shows that he's not super okay with it still. So this is why I'm not unfolding it all of the way and just hucking it on him because then I think I would create a major fear response. So it's important to look at the small changes in behavior because those little changes, while they don't seem severe initially, they'll stack upon each other, which is called trigger stacking. And then that's where you get these big explosions where something minor might happen, but then the horse reacts here hugely because yep. of it and this is why you kind of want to be mindful of those little indicators yeah, of stress so i've put the tarp back down on the ground to encourage him to walk over it again because that's what he's most comfortable with and it's another easy skill for him to do and offer and get rewarded for and then we're taking it right back to something easier and then i pick it up again and he's still standing here and investigating and it's rattling a lot which is great and then he stands and i put it on him and the wind blows it a little bit and it unfolded more than I was intending it to. So he walks away, but as you can see, he comes right back. So his fear level isn't super high. And then I just touch him again on the shoulder where he's most comfortable, give him some food and then remove it. And the reason why I don't leave it on him for extended periods of time right now is just because if he's not super comfortable with it, I don't want to push it to the yep. point where we might get a big reaction. I want to do it in little intervals at and then as he gains more confidence, I can gradually extend the amount of time that I leave the tarp on him. And then also once he does awesome. a good attempt, again, I drag the tarp away That's from really him awesome. and let him follow it because this gives him choice and it makes him feel like he's the big man on campus bravely so following the thing. And, and then he gets rewarded for it. So it takes the fear out of the equation because he has the complete choice to yeah. follow it. And as you can see, he's pretty keen. Like if I were to start running with it, he totally would have ran after it. And he's now targeting the tarp because because I've been rewarding him for investigating it so much. So he's very into being around the tarp and wants to be involved in this because it's exciting. I'm handsome and I know it. So I know yeah. that Banksy is so naturally curious. I use moving the tarp away from him and getting him to follow to my advantage because I know he will follow. Not all horses are this naturally curious, so you may have to shape and reward the follow response quite a bit more than I have for him because he's just so naturally curious. So I use this to my advantage to help him get confident following the tarp so that eventually I can put it over top of him. And it works well for him because he is just so curious and he yeah. finds it so reinforcing to to follow the tarp and be rewarded for it but again it might not work the exact same way with all horses if they're not as curious
Yeah, it wouldn't have been good for him. Yeah. That is quite true. Good boy. on your dress so as you can hear the tarp is very this loud cake. so this is why i took it so this slow with getting him cake. getting used to the sound by following it and just having it touch him lightly before i started to unfold it like this and i also keep an eye on his facial expression to kind of see how he's feeling along with how he's standing and if he's trying to back up if his head is raised if his muscles feel tense and so on and so forth it's important to watch these things so that you're not caught by surprise if they suddenly spook and spooking usually isn't as suddenly as a lot of people think like of course there are sometimes times where horses hear or see something and they'll suddenly have a reaction but a lot of times you can kind of feel their tension building and then they'll have these big reactions when something finally sets them off enough to release all the tension they've been building and this is why i keep such a close eye on his body language i have the food <laughs> he's so cute He's in his poofy coat. Pardon? He's in his puffer. <laughs> his puffy coat. He likes it now. Oh, look. This is what I mean, though. It's a rain sheet. Because he wasn't very happy with it to start. It has a bustle on the back like a Victorian dress. Also, I know some people will say that this type of training is unnecessary and you can just kind of throw it on them or have them on a lead rope and do it that way. But in all honesty, this took me less time than it would have just to kind of force it on a horse and do it without rewards. This is way quicker and it's also less stressful for the horse. So next time I bring the tarp out, he's actually going to be excited to see it rather than afraid. And you can even see as I take it off, he walks away, but he's not nervous. He's not running and he's totally fine. So this is why it's so important to make these things a positive experience because it's safer for you and the horse and it actually pays off more in the long run hope this was interesting and easy to understand. I just wanted to reiterate the fact that Liberty work with the desensitization stuff is so cool because it gives you a really good idea of how stressed your horse is about something and how okay they are with things because they have the choice to leave if they aren't okay. So it'll give you a good idea of how much trust they have in you and how comfortable they are with the stuff that you're throwing at them. I also just want to make it clear that since Banksy is a horse that I've bred and known since birth, our baseline level of trust might be higher than what other people have with their horses, which means it might be easier for me to do certain things with him because he's more receptive and willing to follow me in situations where he may be uncomfortable and this is also why it's important to instill trust and confidence in your horse and your relationship with your horse because once they have that they're more likely to go out of their comfort zone for you so you can start to do these types of exercises to build that it just might be more work initially until you have that initial baseline of trust and it's also important to remember that all horses have different personalities and some horses are more naturally cautious no matter how good your bond is with them and milo is like that so i have horses that are confident and i have horses that are less confident and more flight based so it's not a fault of training if your horse is a more nervous horse naturally but all of these things can help develop their trust and confidence in you and increase their willingness to do things that they find scary thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like this video and share it if you found it helpful thank you Wow, so brave, so brave.